Hey friends, this is me Vishwas Nair and I'm the host of this series of session where I call Devtronians and they actually educate you on how Devtron can make a production impactful journey and also make your production Kubernetes ready. I think there's a lot of buzz that goes behind when everybody wants to adapt Kubernetes and everybody wants to be top of the funnel. That means they want to know what Kubernetes world is, but there is a lot of challenges and Devtron is here to solve them. And I welcome Shailesh, who is going to give you a kind of an introduction, which is a non-technical perspective, but that's absolutely good enough to start your technical journey with Devtron. And thank you so much, Shailesh, for being on the show. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Seeing Devtron making impact in different scale, right? You know, one of our logistics customer is one of the biggest adopters of Devtron. That means they have so many applications, so many microservices running. And now, seeing all that, experiencing all that from the customer side, as well as many POCs that we are doing. So how do you feel Devtron as a platform can make impact in the SDLC or as the production at any scale? And also, how can it make Kubernetes journey much more faster and quicker? Sure. Uh, so. Before I go about how Devtron helps, let's talk about what are the set of challenges today adopted or the industry facing today, especially when they're trying to look at Kubernetes. Um, the biggest challenge is skills. Um, and from an expertise point of view, uh, people who are new to Kubernetes are struggling on a variety of fronts, as in, how do, I, how do they enable developers to make sure that they adopt Kubernetes? Uh, how they themselves look at Kubernetes from an application deployment standpoint, be it day one or day two, uh, or even debugging at a production level. It Kubernetes gives you a lot of benefits, but people are sitting on the, most of the people are sitting on the fence, perhaps even started with one or two applications, but how do they scale to really get benefits of Kubernetes? That is something which the industry is facing challenge today. And Devtron brings that ability for them to address most of these issues, especially even if they don't know what Kubernetes is, how applications can be deployed on Kubernetes. That is addressed typically using a user interface based uh, approach onto Kubernetes. Sure, I think Devtron is making a lot of impact in the open source world where we have many MLOps use cases also delivered and there is a lot that we can talk about in terms of the potential of Devtron. So I think it's better that you start sharing the slides and give us that kind of an introduction which will give us the non-technical approach that is required in order to understand the Devtron ecosystem. Um, so one of the perspectives traditionally what uh, IT industry as such has been that when any feature has to be updated or added, they're typically aggregated based on the waterfall method. And they say, okay, a, a release might happen a month down the line, three months down the line. Um, and for till that moment, the end users have to wait till the uh, benefits of those new, new features can be leveraged. Um, the, the whole idea of shifting left essentially is how can I move more features onto production faster. Um, so the, the, the challenges essentially is something where you have, you know, multiple reasons on why the delays are from a faster release point of view. You have to coordinate with multiple teams. There is delayed access between the two teams, let's say for a test environment like ephemeral environments or setting up a basic testing uh, environment or even uh, you know, how do you roll back uh, if you move to production and if the feature is not working, quickly roll back to the earlier versions. Uh, you know, these are some of the issues with when we have to, one, you need experience in that, two, you need the maturity of the team to take that call, whether they can set up that infrastructure or not. And on the other side, you know, for from that reason, there are issues with respect to production as well where you are, uh, because there are so many features you are trying to put it into a particular release, 
there are chances that you may have missed out on certain integration testing. And then that may come up in the production once you are done in after two or three months. However, and history shows that however much you do a set of testing, it's always there is some other other. So to to make sure that uh, you know the the production is stabilized on an ongoing basis, you do faster releases, uh, which will give you greater stability um, and reliability over a period of time. Um, just to, I, I think I talked about maturity level. So there are issues with respect to how people start off with uh, at a low maturity level, then want to move into medium and high. Uh, there are gaps which they would take. They would take some time. Um, they're probably new to all of this. And, you know, all of these need to be, all, all of these challenges, so to say, can be addressed by an automation tool uh, from that perspective. Um, so as I, as I was talking about, uh, there are containers and Kubernetes. It gives you a lot of benefits. It gives you agility. It you know more number of uh, the faster release of uh, your features or application um, from a scalability point of view, portability point of view, availability point of view. There are a lot of benefits which uh, you know Kubernetes and containers bring to the table. But as I said in the beginning. The skills is a challenge, lack of experience is a problem. Uh, you know, there are some network compatibilities which we have to be addressed. And then a, a usual mindset, and it's true as well, that Kubernetes is complex. Um, let's go a little bit more deeper in, in terms of, you know, what are the typical challenges which come across, especially when you're looking at adopting native Kubernetes or native CI, CD for Kubernetes perspective. So there are issues with respect to developers. There are issues with respect to uh, DevOps. Uh, say, for example, a developer may not know uh, how do I build a Docker file or a Docker image. Uh, so containerization itself could be a challenge. Um, he or she may not know what are the different tools um, which I can use to make sure my uh, build image or even the source code or post-deployment, all of these are secured enough. Uh, there are certain policies which can be enforced at, from a corporate level. How do I integrate those into my code while building the code and deploying it on Kubernetes? Uh, scaling could be a challenge. Uh, let's say, for example, when you're looking at deploying it on EKS, by default, EKS is not built for scaling. You have to tweak it. You have to set it up so that EKS can be actually scaled. So things like these. Uh, are from a developer perspective, and then there are scenarios where uh, DevOps essentially comes into play. Where uh, how do you set up rollbacks? How do you attack or address multiple clusters? How do you manage them um, from a tooling perspective? Uh, you know, is there a triage time which I get? If yes, how much do I get? Can I do a uh, all of that under one umbrella or one dashboard per application or not? All of these aspects is something which is important uh, coming in from uh, challenges. Now, if we dig dive deeper, um, you know, based on the maturity of the organization, uh, be it low maturity, high maturity, they, they have their own set of challenges across these phases which I talked about. And I'm listing a few of them here. Ultimately, they increase the mean time to resolution, and which is not a good thing. They, they need to make sure that it is lower. And similarly, uh, you know, anything to do with failure rates, it has to actually go down instead of going up. So things like these really need to be addressed. And that is where Devtron comes into picture. So it gives you that solution from a containerization perspective. Even if I don't know as a developer what is a Docker file, all I know is where I checked in my last source code. And from there, it should give me as a developer a quick, wizard-like approach and say, okay, here are the tricks, here are the scenarios where you need to, you can build your container image. Uh, if you already have a Docker file, great, you can also use that. Uh, if you want to do a quick and dirty, there are build packs available where, uh, you know, a novice developer can quickly build the container image and be ready. It may not be production ready, but it will at least ease the whole process of how do I containerize. And so there are issues with respect to uh, from a developer perspective, um, you know, do I have to learn a kubectl, for example, 
do I have access? That's the other issues which typically, and I'll talk about that in uh, in later slides. And then by adopting DevTron, it gives you benefits by increasing the productivity. You can scale the entire scenario from day one or day zero in, in our case. Um, and then you can bypass the Kubernetes learning curve quickly because it's all user interface driven. Um, in a you know compliance driven organization or even large enterprises where policies are important, the security and governance comes into play. So there, the tool should enable you me to control access, like provide guardrails, for example. Um, at an organization, you can set that up, and then the developer has to work within those guardrails so that he doesn't slip out from any any perspective. So, uh, you know, anything to do with scanning and testing at scale, how do I harden, harden my pipeline, harden the image, all of those aspects can be brought in by the DevOps team and followed by the developer in this case. Similarly, deployment across clusters, I think one, that's one of the challenges which I talked about earlier. Uh, it, you know, handling one cluster or one particular scenario itself is a challenge. How do I deploy an app across multiple clusters? Let's say one, um, you, you, as an ISV, for example, um, you may have customers deploying or asking for different clouds. Um, so one may be on EKS, another might be in AKS, GKE, OpenShift, Tanzu, what have you. Those need to be addressed and uh, those deployment templates should be ready. Uh, and as a developer, again, you know, I, I don't have to need, I don't need to understand each and every things in detail. So it should actually lower the errors. Uh, my deployment times should increase. Um, and then, uh, you know, it should be pretty much a self-serve model for me to work around from a CI, CD, and day two operations perspective across multiple clusters. Um, now, as a topic, advanced rollback may not be a, a key scenario for an advanced user or um, uh, how should I say, a mature user of uh, Kubernetes, but for an early user um, where the maturity is relatively less, they could be overwhelmed by, you know, what is a canary pipeline, for example. Can I build those? Um, can I make sure that uh, rollbacks can happen as soon as based on the set of criteria which I drive in as soon as possible. Um, so those would eventually move into a production stability, Vishwas. That's what I think you talked about earlier, and it should be easy to use. Uh, I think I talked about the multi-cluster aspects. Here I'm addressing a little more in terms of triaging. How can I make sure that there is a triage across multiple cluster as in a developer should be able to go inside a particular cluster, make sure that identify what, what are the challenges for which there are there is a bug, go fix it, and then uh, move it out. So it helps you, you know, reduce your mean time to resolution. Uh, it gives you a significant cost saving, faster triaging as well as possible. So all in all, this is how DevTron helps uh, in increasing DevOps productivity um, in making sure feature develop deployments, uh, development and deployment speed also increases. Production stability is increased by 3x. And last but not the least, the most important factor, in fact, is a cost saving aspect. Because there are these tools which are already, you know, Argo CD, for example, or Prometheus, uh, Grafana, Kibana, all of those. That's the basis of which DevTron is being built. So you don't have to, you know, second guess it and helps you uh, achieve these aspects pretty fast. That's pretty short and snap answer, uh, I hope, for you, um, Vishwas, and we can take it further from here. Sure. I think there's a lot of potential that DevTron has in order to deliver that value faster and quicker for any production. That means you need not have to worry if you don't have the knowledge of Kubernetes. Just start deploying. Now, I think the UI UX makes it more intriguing to adapt Kubernetes as quick as possible. You know, there, there is no time for me to pay a lot for services like ECS or container instances where it's fine to have 50 instances up and running, but it incurs a lot of cost. And I think DevTron can enable them more to Kubernetes as quick as possible. As fast as possible as well because 
it's a unique solution for them thank you so much shailesh for being on the show and describing what's the potential of devtron in a non technical word or a perspective thank you so much for that sure welcome